So this is um, where my character has already moved into her new abode and is just learning about whatever is happening and is still confused, as we all are. She made breakfast and put down food for Black. When she looked around for him, she saw him sitting by the back door, staring at it. His fur was raised, and the door creaked open. A feeling of dread swept through her as she remembered the opening lines of the book, never leave the door unlocked. But the door had been locked. She checked it before she went to bed. Cautiously, she made her way over and picked up Black, who didn't look away from the door. After counting to three, she yanked it open to see her backyard, just a normal backyard in the early spring. Jesus, age, Black. What the hell is with this door? She set him down and he smelled at it, his fur still puffed up like he'd been rubbed with a balloon. He stuck his head out, looked around, then sauntered over to his food dish, apparently satisfied his territory was safe from intruders. She locked it and double-checked that it couldn't open on its own. Creepy. She took her cup of coffee over to the chair and reopened the book that came with the apartment. Once again, a piece of paper fell out. This time, it had an address across the town and the words, find the shepherd, written below it. The coffee turned extra bitter and Maggie set the cup down before she spilled it. This paper wasn't in the book yesterday. She had no doubt about that. Was that why the back door was open? Had someone come in and left her a message? Sure, because that's what people do. They come into your house on top of an apartment building and leave you weird little notes instead of stealing your stuff. <laughs> she closed her eyes and tried to calm her nerves. She could take on bullies on the street with a baseball bat, but having creepy things in her new home was a different ballgame. She opened her eyes when she felt Black's paw on her hand. He pushed the paper at her. No. No way can you weird me out too. You've been a normal, if slightly overly grouchy, stray. You can't get all spooky too. He yawned and pushed the paper at her again. Fine. She stood and stomped upstairs to the bedroom. Fine. I'll listen to a book and a cat. It's not like I have anything else to do, right? She threw on whatever clothes she grabbed first. I had a normal job. I understand numbers. Now I'm following the instructions that appear in the night. Why not? She wasn't usually one to talk to herself, but the silence in her lovely, weird little cottage was unnerving. Thankfully, Black didn't respond. She grabbed her keys, checked the back door, and left. Brenda was waiting at the reception desk and smiled widely when she came out of the elevator. Looks like you're in a hurry. I've got your morning paper here and some mail that's been forwarded from your old place. Want me to take it upstairs? Maggie stopped and took a second to steady herself. Can you go upstairs? I thought it was all cloak and dagger. Brenda rolled her eyes. Haven't you read the book yet, silly? Of course I can. I'll let you go wherever you were going. Anything you need from me? Sanity answers. Somehow, she knew she wouldn't get any useful information, at least not yet. Could you find out which delivery places are best in this area? I don't cook, and I may starve to death if I have to eat too many microwave meals. She stopped and stared at Brenda. How do you know about the book? Brenda laughed. Sure thing. Want me to choose a takeout for you tonight and get it delivered at a certain time? And as for the book, I know all kinds of fun stuff. You'll see. She shrugged and grinned. Um, no, thanks. I don't know when I'll be back or what I'll feel like having. Maggie had never had an assistant of any kind, nor had she really had anyone to take care of things even when she was young. It felt just as surreal as the rest of her life had become. No problem. Good luck. Maggie headed in the spring morning, contemplating Brenda's words. Good luck? Why would she think I'd need luck? Did she leave me the note in the book? Given that Brenda could go up to the cottage and apparently knew about the book, it seemed possible. But why would she? Did she go by Seamus after 4.46 p.m.? She considered going back to ask, but she had a feeling any answer she got would be about as helpful as gum in your hair. Instead, Maggie entered the address from the note into her phone's GPS and headed down to the subway to catch the 6 to City Hall. It was in a part of town she'd never bothered to go. Money bled from the walls of the buildings, and the people smelled of jaded success. The area made her feel like she was dragging her roots along behind her for everyone to see.